In this episode, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to make and install this modern entrance table. The first step in this project is to make a box. For the top, bottom, and sides of the box, I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood. For the back of the box, I'll use half inch birch plywood. I'll use the miter saw to cut the parts to a rough length, and then I'll use my crosscut sled to cut the parts to size. Because I'm designing this cabinet to hang on the wall with a French cleat, I'll set the back of the cabinet in a half of an inch. I'll attach the sides to the back first using a little wood glue and inch and a half nails. With the sides attached, I can pull the tape to get an accurate measurement to cut the top and bottom to length. Again, I'm going to use the crosscut sled to make the finished cuts. When I attach the top and bottom, I'll make sure that I'm flush on the back, front, and sides. I'll tack the sides in position before using inch and a half screws. The back of the cabinet is only attached with inch and a half nails and wood glue. The best fill to use when you're working with veneer is Auto Body Bondo. And this stuff has a really strong fiberglass smell, so I like to use it at the end of the day just before I leave the shop. Now I've got the box put together, I've filled and sanded the holes, and the next step is to make the walnut legs. I'll start with a piece of five quarter walnut and I'll rip two pieces at two and a quarter. I'll square up one end and then set up a stop block to make the cut at 19 and a half. I'm using three quarter inch material for the outside of the leg. I'll make the rip at two and a quarter and then cross cut the parts at 31. The next step is to assemble the leg. And I am going to use a biscuit towards the top of the leg and that will help to keep the boards aligned during the glue up. I'm not adding a biscuit at the bottom because I don't want to run into a biscuit while I'm shaping the leg. Next, I'll move on to making the molding to trim out the front of the box. The first rip is at a quarter of an inch. Then I'll reset the fence and make the second rip at three quarters of an inch heavy, leaving enough room to sand the molding to the thickness of the plywood. To attach the trim to the front of the cabinet, I'll use a 23 gauge pin nailer and a few bandy clamps. A sacrificial fence like the one I'm using right here makes cutting small moldings like this really easy and accurate. If you want to see how I made this one, click on the link in the description below.
I've let the glue set up for about an hour and now I can remove the clamps and sand the cabinet, making sure the molding is sanded flush with the plywood. With the cabinet sanded, I'll apply the first coat of water-based poly using a foam roller. I'm using peel and stick veneer on this project, and to get a good adhesion, it's important to have a smooth surface. And to achieve a smooth surface, I'll use two coats of water-based polyurethane sanding in between coats. While the first coat of polyurethane is drying, I can start shaping the legs. I'll start by trimming about an eighth of an inch off of each side of the leg and then I'll run the legs through the drum sander to remove the blade marks. Next I'll rip a piece of eighth inch plywood to make a pattern. I'm going to add a little shape to the back of the leg. So I've got a piece of eighth inch plywood here. And first I'm going to make a mark at one inch. Then I'll measure up 16 inches. And I'm just getting kind of a gentle bend. Now I'll cut this out on the bandsaw. It's hard to see the pencil in walnut, but I've marked the front legs. This is the front right leg, this is the front left leg. And you just want to keep that in mind when you're making this cut. So now I'll put the pattern on top of the left leg and trace it. and I'll flip the pattern and trace it on the right leg. Now I'm gonna take the cut off and I'm going to tape it to the leg and that will allow me to make the same cut on the front of the leg. I've used the same pattern. I'm flush at the side, flush at the bottom, and I'll make this cut on the bandsaw. I've clamped the legs together and to my workbench, and now I'll use the belt sander to remove the blade marks. For this project, I'm using a walnut peel and stick veneer, and the first step is to cut the veneer a little heavy. I like to have about a quarter to a half inch overhang on all sides, and then I'll trim the overhang with a flush cut bit in the router. I've prepared the surface of the cabinet with two coats of water-based poly, sanding in between each coat and getting a nice smooth surface. You only get one shot with peel and stick veneer, so it's good to have a plan. In this case, my plan is to raise the cabinet up a quarter of an inch, and then stand the veneer up. I'm going to veneer the sides of the cabinet first. Because my shop is a little on the cool side, I use a clothes iron to get a better bond with the peel and stick veneer. And then I use a J-roller.
Now I have the sides of the cabinet veneered. The next piece goes on the top and there's not a lot of room for error here. I'm using eighth inch shims and the plan is to remove the backing and stand it up. After trimming the veneer, I'll sand the outside of the cabinet with 220 sandpaper in the palm sander. After applying the veneer and giving the cabinet and the legs a good sanding, I'm just about ready to attach the legs. I did decide to drop the legs down an inch. Originally, I was going to cut the top of the leg flush with the top of the cabinet. I've decided to bring it down an inch and also add a five degree angle. I've wrapped the leg in painter's tape to help avoid tear out during the cut. On the inside of the cabinet, I'll measure in two and an eighth and then mark a line at two and five and a half to pre-drill and countersink. I'm using this spacer as I attach the leg and as long as the spacer is flush with the front of the cabinet, I'm good to go. Again, I'm using the auto body bondo to fill the holes. The front of the cabinet will be supported by its legs and the back of the cabinet will hang from the wall on a French cleat. To make the French cleats, I'll set the table saw blade at a 45 degree angle and rip two pieces of half inch plywood, one for the back of the cabinet and one for the wall. To attach the French cleat to the back of the cabinet, I'm using wood glue and three quarter inch nails. I'll also use two 25 pound plates for a little added clamping pressure. Now I'm ready to finish the cabinet and I posted a full video on the finishing of this project last week and I'll have a link to that video in the description below. Okay, well, there it is, and I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. I think it's really cool how the cabinet hangs on the wall, yet is also supported by the legs at the front. If you want to build this project, I will be posting my hand-drawn plans to Patreon, and I'll be posting a Q&A video to Patreon on this project as well. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.